Today I'm going to show you how to fix the pull starter recoil of a Homelite 26cc leaf blower vac, model UT26HBV. I'm going to show you how to take it apart step by step. I'm not going to show you how to replace the rope, however you can refer to this video to learn how to get to the pull cord spool. Let's get started. Here's a quick look at some of the tools you'll need. Before disassembly, let's start by removing any fuel and taking the cap off the spark plug. Now I'm going to remove the shroud cover by removing these four torque screws here. And I like to have a cover close by and label it so I know where the screws came from. Now I'm going to remove the seven torque screws from the fan side. Now before I can remove this assembly, I need to turn around the unit and remove two torque screws that hold the hose on. Turn the unit back around and to get the housing off, use a small flathead screwdriver to just kind of pry around the edges. And then here, there's a tab here, and you need to get in here as well and lift up to release it. like wrestling an alligator. To remove the plastic impeller, we need to remove the spark plug. This is a three quarter inch socket wrench. Now I'm gonna take a piece of starter rope and fish it down in here. and turn the impeller. And I'm turning the impeller counterclockwise and with the starter rope in there it locks it up. Now I'll use a half inch socket wrench to begin to loosen the impeller. And once I get it started I can just spin it off. The impeller, washer, I'm going to remove this spacer. Now that the impeller's off, we have access to these screws that will allow us to separate this from the engine. Now I'll remove these four torque screws. Now before I remove the engine, I need to remove the throttle cable here. In order to do that, push down on the trigger and I'll use my finger just to hold that in place. And I can just use a needle nose pliers to lift it out. Now I'm going to separate the engine from the housing by pulling out and there's a wire harness in here that I'll need to remove. I can just use a needle nose plier. 
and then there's a red wire which is actually uh, screwed in to the terminal and I'll need to flip the unit over in order to remove that screw so I can completely remove the engine. You can see the screw here, I think. It's not too dark. So there's a screw right here, we'll remove from that terminal. And when you flip the unit over, a piece of plastic may fall out looks like this and that piece of plastic just goes right there. Now we have access to the rope spool and underneath that is the spring. Now I'm going to remove these three torque screws which have hinges on them and they're holding down the spool and the indent goes down. This is the bottom is solid which holds the spool in. Now I'm going to remove the spool which contains the pull starter and to do this you want to put your safety glasses on. Sometimes debris gets underneath here in which case the spool could be stuck to the housing of the spring and the spring can jump up and surprise you. If you're removing the pull starter spool and the spring gets loose, it'll look like this. It's a bit of a mess. And in this case, you'll have to recoil the spring. I can show you how to fix that in a moment. So you want to lift this up very carefully. And if you're going to replace the cord, for the pull starter, it's about, you'll want to use about 45 inches total, but once you've put the knots in and cut off the slack, it'll be about 38 inches. So here's the spring housing. You'll notice that part of the spring sticks out and goes around this nipple right here. Lift this up and the spring is still contained. There's a cutout in the spring housing. You'll notice that the spring is a little bent and there's a loop here. Sometimes this breaks off. In this case, the spring is actually still good. I don't need to buy a replacement spring. All I needed to do was take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend the end here so that when I put the spring assembly on the pull starter spool, the loop catches the edge of the spool's housing, and that creates the recoil. If the spring pops out, to recoil the spring, I'm going to put on some cut-proof gloves and safety goggles. I've hammered a brad into the workbench. I'm going to take the loop of the spring and place that around the brad. Then I'm going to take the spring housing with the opening and I'm just going to place it over top so that only part of the spring sticks out. Then I'm going to take my drill with the chuck on its widest open setting and the reason I'm using the brad is if I used a regular nail I could damage the chuck on the drill. And then I'm going to put the, the chuck around the spring and you want to go the right direction so you want to go clockwise so the drill on tighten or drill hold down the housing and I have it partially off the workbench and I'll show you why in a moment when I get to the end of this, the uh, spring. And just hold it down, start tightening, slowly. And then when I get to the end, 
The reason I have it slightly off the bench is now I can tuck this underneath. And if I can't tuck it, then I need to tighten the spring a little more to get it more into the center of the housing. There we go. And lift off gently, clear the brad, and we're rewound. I'm going to put the spring assembly back in. You'll notice there's a loop here and a loop here. And this loop goes around the nipple here. And in order to make sure I get the spool nice and tight, I'm actually going to remove the knot from the handle. And that way I can make sure I get a nice tight pull. Now we'll remove the handle. And if I was replacing the cord, I wouldn't want to put the handle back on yet. Because I need slack in order to create tension in here. So I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to remove this spacer, which goes here. I'm going to rewind my spool. And then I'll place it down so that the teeth of the spool catch the loop of the spring right there. Place it down, push and turn until it locks in. Now I'll put the spacer back on. Put this plastic piece here back in and that holds the spacer in. I'll feed the line through this hole here. Now I should have recoil. Before I tie the pull handle back on, I'm going to put these three Torx screws back on along with the brackets so that the spool doesn't lift up. And the indent goes down. This is the bottom is solid which holds the spool in. If you're not getting enough recoil before putting in the three torque screws and before putting the spool on, wind your spool, put the pull cord into this little groove here on the spool, then place the spool back on and turn it until it, the teeth of the spool lock onto the spring. Then turn the spool clockwise until the groove with the cord in it is here. Then hold down the spool, put your three torque screws in, remove the cord from the little groove, fish it through your spacers, and then you can put a little clamp here and tie off your handle. Then release and you should have a lot of tension. It just puts more tension on the spring. Now I can tie back on my handle. You can put a little tape on the end of the string if it gets frayed, make it easier to thread. Now to reassemble. So I'm going to take my motor and this shaft is going to go through the spool. But as I do that I need to connect my wiring terminals here. The red is going to go to this post here. It's going to screw in there. And then the black wire here 
is going to go on this terminal here. And I may not be able to do that on camera without getting my hands in the way. Get the red terminal in first. And then I can flip it up. Now the black terminal. Now we'll put the shaft through the spool. Now we'll reconnect the throttle line. Turn the unit over. Put back in these torque screws. Reattach the impeller, spacer goes on the shaft, washer, doesn't go all the way down, it's a little space there, the impeller, and this half inch nut which has teeth on it that go into the holes of the impeller. Hand tighten it first, make sure the teeth go into those holes. reattach the impeller housing and when doing this keep in mind that there are grooves in here that will line up with these two screws and then you also have to keep in mind that we've got these uh, clips on the front and it's a little awkward because of the weight so you line up the grooves in the bottom Now we'll put in our torque screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And these screws are T20s. Now we'll turn the unit around. We'll put in these two torque screws. These are T20s as well. Put the spark plug back in. Put the shroud cover back on. We'll put in the four torque screws. These are T15s. Reattach the spark plug. And we're ready to start blowing. If this video has been helpful, please do me a favor and like it. And most importantly, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.